On Saturday, August 29th, I went to Fan Expo in uh, Toronto at the Metro Toronto Convention Center, and I dragged my mom along with me because, well, she offered to uh, help pay for it. <laughs> and honestly, it's kind of hard finding people who are free to go to Toronto on weekends who are also just as interested in nerd stuff as me. <laughs> so I was pleased that my mom came with me. Um, our main reason for going was actually to see Leonard Nimoy, who was going to be there this year, and uh, if you had the deluxe pass, which I did, you got to go in and um, hear the Q&A from him, which was really exciting. Uh, there were a lot of people at Fan Expo this year, like thousands of people, most of whom seemed to be anime nerds, I think, <laughs> um, and most of them were also teenagers. A uh, surprising number of people under the age of 20. In any case, I had a lot of fun. Um, the first thing I did when I got there was head straight down to uh, the autographing area because originally I had planned to hopefully get an autograph from Leonard Nimoy and maybe one from uh, Mary McDonald as well because I'm a big Battlestar Galactica fan and uh, maybe one from Walter Koenig again because I'm a Star Trek fan. Um, but when I got down there, I found out that uh, <laughs> both the photo ops, so getting your pictures taken with the celebrities, and the autographs would run you anywhere from about 40 to $60 each, which is a little bit insane and way too much for me. So instead I decided to just stand back and uh, take some free pictures and video when I got the chance. After that I did a tour of the whole place, and uh, they're mainly on the floor, they have uh, mostly merchandise. It's a lot of comic books, a lot of manga, a lot of uh, anime collectibles, a lot. And uh, a bunch of things like Transformers, Star Trek memorabilia, Halo stuff, um, Gears of War, various video game things. If you have a lot of money, it's a very good place to go, because you will never find a bigger collection of collectibles, except for perhaps in another convention. Sometime around 11.30, uh, me and my mom made our way to uh, one of the bigger halls so we could go see Leonard Nimoy, who we saw uh, from the third row, because we were there early. And he gave a great talk, a uh, very great talk, um, covered all sorts of things, Star Trek, um, had a lot of very good questions from fans. So I won the argument, and, and, uh, and he said, your book, we'll call it whatever you like, and we call it I'm Not Spock. It was a big mistake. It was a mistake. I made a mistake. Um, this book came out <coughs> at a time when there was a tremendous hunger for more Star Trek, and we were not making it. We had finished the series in 1966, 7, and 8. The final episodes went on in 1969. This book came out about 1971 or 2 or thereabouts, and there was a tremendous hunger for more Star Trek, and the Star Trek episodes were on in reruns, but there was no new production. And the feeling was that the reason there was no new production was because I wouldn't do Star Trek anymore. Because I was refusing to be identified with Spock, saying, I'm not Spock. So, well, that, and that was not the case at all. It was not my intention. That was not the reality. There was simply no Star Trek being produced. So, it was, it was a, a problem for me. For several years, people were angry and upset, and I would get nasty mail, and who do you think you are? And they're preventing us from having what we want, and what we love, and what we need to have. <laughs> we're addicted to Star Trek, and you're preventing us from having more Star Trek. And it's, it was silly, and it was terrible. And generally, I was just really, really thrilled to actually see him in person, since I'm probably never going to get to see him again. And my mom was also super thrilled with the experience as well. So, Mom, what do you think of Leonard Nimoy? Well, he was worth fifty dollars. Yeah, I think he's so nice. He is so nice. What? Is, what is, he's humble. Like, yeah, when he talked about humility, what a nice man. He was definitely worth the admission price, and I am prepared to tag along with you for the rest of the day. Yay! Now it's anime stuff. After seeing Leonard Nimoy, I went on a little bit of a shopping spree for myself. And uh, then it was time for Q&A with Steve Downs, who, if you don't know, is the uh, voice of Master Chief from the Halo series. 
and uh, not so many people showed up to that Q&A, but it wasn't because nobody was interested, it was more because it seems like it was badly advertised, and for some reason nobody knew it was on, even the biggest Halo fans. Um, he covered a lot of great material, things about um, the Halo movie, uh, which, and why it's probably not happening, or if it ever will. Um, you know, his voice recording sessions, how he got the job, um, a lot of just really interesting material. And he also seems to be a really nice guy as well. Uh, and it's, um, when you read for a, a video game, it's a little odd because you don't see anything. I had no idea when we did the first day of what Master Chief looked like. Uh, he gave me a brief description of the character <clears throat> and uh, described him as a, uh, as a uh, Clint Eastwood uh, type, sort of a, you know, didn't say much, but carried an awfully big stick. And, uh, uh, you, you know, described the world, the Halo world for me, and then we, we went from there. And after the q and I went down to the autograph session and I got myself an autograph from Steve, which is really awesome. I had my picture taken with him as well, so that's something that I'm going to be pleased about. And uh, a little while later, I went on up to the next uh, Q&A, um, which was a video gaming industry session uh, with uh, Victor Lucas and Scott Jones from uh, Reviews on the Run and Electric Playground, and also uh, Matt Levitan, who um, works with uh, PlayStation, I believe he's their marketing director, and Jesse Scoble, who uh, has worked in various positions on City of Heroes. And that panel, although I don't have a huge amount of video from, was very interesting. They were talking about all kinds of topics, um, such as uh, well, interesting things like sex in video games, mature titles, um, downloadable content and the future of that. They even mentioned OnLive, of course, which is an area of interest to me. Uh, new mediums of gaming like, say, uh, the iPhone. Um, just a variety of very interesting things. Uh, it actually interested my mom, even, who is not a gamer at all. <laughs> it really blows my mind how much, uh, you know, freedom there is and how many different ways to enjoy a video game. Well, we never had, you know, a lot of you are too young to remember this, but we never had this kind of variety before. I mean, we're really, yeah. I mean, I cannot believe the amount of stuff we get to play on a daily basis, let alone weekly, monthly basis. And uh, generally, I was just really pleased to uh, be able to see Victor Lucas especially, because I've been watching him on TV for years, and uh, he seems to be a very cool guy in person. And a funny thing about the panel is, if you can get those guys off of TV, <laughs> you get a much more natural and full of swearing kind of discussion, which is a lot of fun anyway. Um, after uh, the gaming session, I went to a sneak preview of the uh, Heroes Season 3 DVD Special Features, and they also give a preview of the new season coming up. Um, and that was with James Kyson Lee, who, if you don't know, plays Ando on the TV series. And that was a lot of fun, and James Kyson Lee also did a bit more of a Q&A, even though his q and I believe, was on the Friday. Uh, and he's a really nice guy, and he answered uh, all sorts of questions about what it's like filming, things about him getting into acting, how he got the part, uh, things about some of the other cast members. Very interesting discussion as well. I've been on a harness many times. Uh, anytime you have a scene with Silar and he does the telekinetic stuff, you have to be pinned up against the wall, and uh, that's usually with a wire. And uh, because we have a lot of wardrobe, the only way that's done is to have something on your chest inside all your clothes and they have to do it in a way that you can't see it so it has to be really tight and then you have your other set of wardrobes specifically for the stunt over it and then they have these wires they somehow I mean you saw it during the uh, the behind the scenes and then somehow they erase it out you know when they add the special effects so um, I remember that season one remember when I went to buy Sailor like only with a sword and I didn't have any powers and so uh, there was a thing where I had to uh, be thrust into like this fiberglass thing and like I had to do it on my own for several times and I remember being just hung on wires for like hours and after a while I was like wow you know so you kind of get an appreciation for like what the stunt guys have to go through sometimes. And at the end of the day to wrap up because uh, Fan Expo only went until I believe it was 7 o'clock which I thought was kind of an early shutdown time uh, they had the masquerade, which I had been told was actually a very good part of Fan Expo, but having not been other years, I really can't say. This year it was a little bit disappointing. It moved very slowly, had lots of technical difficulties, and I have to say that the people who entered the masquerade didn't necessarily have the best costumes, because there were a lot of people in costume at Fan Expo, and a lot of them were very good. They just 
did not sign up to participate in the masquerade. Um, definitely a bit of a disappointment.